In order to get started, you will need some pouring jugs, a few jars of different sizes and colors, a range of wicks suited to the jars, a glue gun, some wax and some fragrance oils. To melt the wax, you want to avoid direct heat, so you can use either an aluminum kettle or a melting pot like this one from SA Candle Supply. The pot has a water jacket that needs to be filled with warm water and heated on the stove. As the pot heats up, you can add the required amount of wax for the number of jars you wish to fill. As the pot heats up, the wax will begin to melt in about 8 to 10 minutes. As it melts, stir occasionally to break up larger clusters of wax. One of the most important aspects is to ensure that the wax is not overheated. An infrared non-contact thermometer should be used to measure every few minutes to get to the optimal temperature. While the wax is melting, you can begin to prepare your jars. Essential to choosing the correct wick is knowing the correct diameter. So measure your jars and check against SA Candle Supplies wick charts available on our website. For deeper jars, you can use an old pen with the inside removed to help reach the bottom of the jar. Most wicks have a metal sustain on the end, which will be used to fasten to the bottom of the jar. Using a glue gun, carefully apply glue to the sustainer, ensuring that any strands of glue don't get stuck to the sides of the jar. Using the pen, firmly press the wick into place. Multiple wicks can be used for larger jars. Take care to center single wicks as closely to the middle as possible. You can use some popsicle sticks with a hole drilled through to ensure that when the wax solidifies, the wick is positioned correctly. For larger candles with multiple wicks, you can position a few sticks leaving sufficient space for you to pull the wax in. Lightly bending the wick over the stick will seat it properly, keeping it stable for when it cools. To maintain full consistency, we recommend making a mark using a dry wipe marker. Remember to leave sufficient space for your second, finishing pour. Using a large jug that pours well, pour out a measured amount of wax as the fragrance must be proportionally added. For coloured candles, you can finely chop the suggested amount of colour block or dye. Add the colour to the wax while the wax is still sufficiently warm and mix the colour into the wax, stirring continuously. This stage needs to be done quite quickly as the wax can cool in cold ambient temperatures. In preparation for the fragrance, check the temperature again. A wide range of fragrances are available, which can be used on their own or combined to make your own unique mix. The amount of fragrance for a particular volume of wax is specific to the type of wax, the fragrance and the desired strength and fragrance throw. The temperature at which the wax is poured will have a significant effect on the finish of the candle. Fragrance separation and wax smoothness will be negatively affected if the wax is poured at the wrong temperature. You will need to work quickly and carefully to get the jars filled, so it is recommended that you work in smaller batches rather than large volumes all at once.
as you pour, fill the jar up to the mark that you made earlier, as you will be pouring a second pour later on when the candle is fully solidified. Remember to keep enough wax in the jug for your second pour. Melt the remaining wax and carefully fill the jars up to about 15mm from the top of the jar. If you have any extra wax, you can use it to make fragrance melts that can be used in a burner. Once the fragrance have cooled, trim the excess wick with a pair of scissors and leave them to be about 1 cm long. Your creation is complete.